ならその新しい人生にまっすぐに生きてほしいね後宮家のことなんて忘れてしまうくらいがちょうどいいよ George Sama smiled at me, expecting me to agree. After a moment of shock, I smoothed my expression over the found expression he was expecting. His better son, living happily, and we forgotten about the family, about me, about our promise. That can't be true. It just can't be. Melusan must be striving to reach that day of resolve just like me. I'm not mistaken about that. He promised me. He said he'd come riding a white horse. I never asked him to say that. He said he'd come for me on the day I resolved to live life for his sake. He made that promise himself. For two years, I believed that. I've done all I could to make it through God's trials and the whisperings of the demons that tried to throw me from my path. And yet, in the things both George Sama and Jiska Sama are saying, it's so cruel. And our son has forgotten about us and has started a new life? Why are they telling us such obvious lies? But that night, I dreamed of Bellerson for the first time in a long while. The Bellerson in my dream wasn't the Bellerson I believed in. It was the Bellerson that George Sama and Jessica Sama had spoken of. The one who had forgotten everything and started a new life. Morning arrived. I woke up with a tear stained face. The me in the mirror. Whimpered through tears that she couldn't wait any longer. Ah, poor thing. I cannot even imagine how many nights like this you've had in the past. If you've managed to wait this long, why can't you wait any longer? This is a trial. We have to believe in him and wait. But the me in the mirror spoke. It was sharper than a fragment of glass. We talk about this promise, but did we actually make a promise with him? Don't you remember what Jessica Sama said? That some girls are dreamers who get the wrong idea. Don't you remember what George Sama said? That better son has forgotten used to this new life, and has forgotten about the Ushirima family? He wouldn't be the only one to forget. Without me asking about Better Son, everyone on this island would have forgotten his name. Even Rudolf Sama doesn't have to say his name anymore. If I weren't here to remember his face, perhaps his existence would have been erased from the hearts of, and minds of everyone here. I don't believe it, so I won't doubt him. Better Son must still remember our promise. We're both waiting for the day of resolve. The day we'll be together. Which, you know, it makes that test in episode 4 even harder for Beatrice because... I mean, who knows? Like, initially you would think that at some point... Uh, Beatrice slash Yasta slash Shannon... They would think that, okay, it is official. Bellera has forgotten their promise. But to think that maybe up until that test, like in episode 4, up until 1986, for six years, Shannon still had, still had a little bit of faith in them that Bellera did not uh, break their promise. Or that they would eventually come for Shannon. And when Better gave his answer in uh, episode 4 during that test, that was it. I mean, you cannot confirm more than that. You, you, cannot, uh, you, can, can, you cannot confirm more than, than what um, 
Shannon is going through. So, yeah. My mind is finally made up. Does the fact that you are not here mean that I'm still not resolved enough? No. It's because you and God are testing me, isn't it? In that case, I will endure. Until that promised day inevitably comes. So, please. Better son. I want some sign that you haven't forgotten. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it... You know how before I was thinking, okay, Shannon slash Beatrice slash Yasuda... I guess I'm just gonna go with, uh, with Shannon for this particular case. Uh, like, okay, eventually during these years, Shannon will eventually come to the realization that better would never come. He broke his promise. I am heartbroken about this. So, it is what it is, sadly. But what if we are going with the idea and um, uh, Shannon would actually eventually, uh, slash Beatrice, would eventually find uh, that uh, Beller comes back to the family and that would be quite a shock. Like, she wouldn't have imagined that at this point Beller would come. But what if we are to think of the situation that Shannon would still wait, would still have that in mind, that Bella would come eventually. And it is 1986, it is announced that Bella would come to the family, and Shannon would actually be, be feeling happy. But at the same time, there's also George. And when the test came, and when Bella came, uh, to the family conference in 1986, Shannon would actually expect uh, Beller to say something to Shannon, but Beller acts as if no promise was made. It wasn't necessarily that uh, the last straw was drawn, like, like during those six years. It would be during that family conference that Shannon would actually break up, would be heartbroken. Because apparently better would not remember. And that was a crack that ran across my ceramic heart. At last, I had to acknowledge the possibility. The possibility that something terrible and dreadfully sad was happening. And I was pretending not to notice. Better son makes me yearn for him. Better son makes me sad. Better son makes it hurt. Better son, do you still remember me now? And then came the third family conference since Better Son left. Given the number of beds was going to increase, we will be told about that when setting up. The fact that nothing has changed in particular means that he probably won't be here this year either. Clinging to a final bit of hope, I stood by the docks, watching the boat draw closer. Yo, Shannon chan Kotoshimo ほら、エンジェ。足元に気をつけて。いや、シャノン。やっぱり<笑> So, after all, Merosan has been so thoroughly forgotten that he might as well not have existed in the first place. And the sadness must be showing on my face. 
not wanting anyone to see it, but I turned my back to the family and led the way up to the mansion. Then, suddenly, someone mentioned Belisar's name, and I jumped. え、<laughs> I was surprised. So, Kiriyasama was in touch with Belarusan. According to her, the fight between Belarusan and Rulosama had calmed down a long time ago, but both were so stubborn that they hadn't found a good chance to make up. And since Belarusan had gotten used to living with his grandparents and going to school near there, it wasn't going to be easy to get him to come back home, especially considering that the grandparents were adding extra complications. Oh, I can imagine that Asmus's uh, parents would be angry with the whole situation. Not just because of what uh, uh, Beller is going through, like the poor kid. They would love Beller. But also because of uh, Asumu's death and what uh, Rudolf did, which... I could definitely say that Rudolf would not... Uh, like, uh, Asumu's parents would definitely not be uh, fa like uh, fans of Rudolf, that's for sure. And for that matter, Kiria as well. It was a bit of a relief to hear that some of the bad feeling had died down in these three years. Taking Asmosama's parents taking Asmosama's parents into account, it's no surprise that things hadn't gone as well as they could. But a better son doesn't hate Rudo Sama anymore, and then someday Surely he'll come back. He'll have grown so much. My resolve will never waver again. For some nights these past three years, I felt sad and resentful. But now, it feels as though those three years were something I needed. After all, the seeds of love, the faint feelings I once had for you, uh, but powerfully, waiting for the day that we'll be reunited. This is how honest my feelings for you are now. I love you. I want to see you again as soon as I can. Until that time, I'll keep this sprout of love warm and growing for you. I won't doubt the coming of that day anymore. Just as I think of you under the same sky, I believe that you are thinking of me. I'm sure this news about him is a sign that God is cheering me on. So I asked God one more time, inside my heart, since my feelings for Belosan have not wavered for a day these past three, three years. Let me know that he feels the same way. I know that asking for that is a sin. However, now that we've reached a three-year turning point, I want some gift from God, any gift, to show that I have not waited in vain. Yeah, you know, I want to note that uh, when it comes to Shannon and her narration as of late, she is uh, very religious, that's for sure. She does uh, think of God, like, a lot, and sins, which, again, I feel like I also made that point in the past when it comes to connecting Beatrice and uh, uh, Shannon. I feel like uh, I feel like uh, Shannon uh, did talk about God before, and uh, you know Beatrice does speak of uh, of the sin in a in a religious uh, way. She well, not in a religious way, but uh, she does. Uh, think of the sin like a lot in similar fashion to how Shannon would think of sins as well mm, 
that is what I prayed. So that. Batrak and Mina Mo Zibun Nagaka at the night show? Mina Mo Sabishing at the Zarokara, Hegamio Kakina Site Te Kakasetic Tano. Oh, huh? Did God really hear my prayers? I felt as though my heart was going to leap out of my chest. Batrak and the Tegami? うーん、ディスクビーリーバッド。イフシャノンディナットゲットライクエニーレターズ。あいつ何を書いたんだろう。彼の近況でも書かれてるのかな。楽しみだね。キリアスマポールブラウンエンブロバドウェルバックエンエ
that promise with better might have been an illusion the whole time. And we don't even know if they felt the same way about each other in the first place. Love is an illusion. With both, when both sides see the same illusion, the love becomes true. However, when things of each side are different, then it's nothing more than a joke. これが。違う。え。それを覚えてさえいなかったことだ。破った約束なら。なじることもできる。食えることも。あるいは取り返すことも。でも覚えてさえいないことは何も問い詰めることができません。バトラさんを憎むことなどできません。バトラさんは約束を破ってさえいないのですから。Well, of course he did. In my eyes, if you do if you don't remember a promise, then that is breaking the promise as well, because you forgot about it. Forgetting a promise also breaks promise. Uh, however, that is what uh, goes through the mind of Yasta in the end, so... Hmm. I kept on crying and crying. I dug my fingernails into my pillow, soaking it with my tears. How much easier it would be to hate something. But I cannot hate anything. I just couldn't get over my miserable arrogance, which had led me to believe for three whole years that he felt the same as I did. わらわが無責任にもバトラが約束してくれたかのようにそなたに不意調してしまったのだいいえ誰も悪くないんです私が彼の気持ちも私と同じだと決めつけてしまったから約束こそバトラはしなかったしかしバトラの気持ちは決して言い加減なものではなかったはずそなたのそれに比べれば確かに多少の温度差はあろうしかしそなたのことを好いていたのは間違いないそれだけは間違いないもうやめてください私が好きなように彼も私を好きだと何の疑いもなく信じてきました before I knew it, a dull and escapable pain had pierced my chest. When I pressed my hand against my chest, I realized that what that pain was. It was the bud of love, which I had sown the seeds of and raised in my heart. Its roots had spread throughout my chest, tormenting me like a metal wire wrapped around my heart. Rather than roots, they looked more like fissures running from my heart. The only way to kill the pain would be to tear out the roots of love. But no matter how much I clawed at them, it was only my heart that got torn and scratched. The roots of love didn't move at all. My feelings for better son were to turn to hate, without any lingering interest or regrets. I'd be able to pull out these roots easily. And they would probably leave a hole behind, but as they wouldn't hurt me anymore. But they won't come out. Even though it hurts so much, 
those roots of love are still stuck in my heart. As I sought, the tightness in my chest grew even stronger. As long as I love better son, that pain will always continue. Because I love him, I want to hold on to that pain forever. But he was writing right there in the letters for George Sum and the others. The letter doesn't plan on returning to the Ushumiya family. He's forgotten about me and Rokinjima, and has started a new life with a different name. I have to endure all this aching. I have to endure all this aching, biting, agonizing pain. And wait forever for someone who will never return. Beatrice hung her head in shame. If she hadn't encouraged Shana so much, he probably wouldn't have been this painful. Shana may have been the one to sow the seed of love in her heart. However, Beatrice had irresponsibly watered it and told Shana not to give up. Beatrice scratched at her chest, trying to share Shana's pain. Beatrice mumbled to herself. あり<笑> バトラを Wordlessly, Shannon held her chest and hung her head. I yearn for better. Even now, that feeling burns inside me. And no matter how much it hurts, I can't let it go. I spent three years pretending not to notice that pain. Now, I know that I feel it. And now that I know, it's unbearable. バトラへの恋の目を捨てることはできぬか。はい。だがその <笑> Hitori 
人いるのだ宇宙そなたは恋の目という宇宙をバトラと二人で生み出したその片方が欠けたからそなたの宇宙が壊れたのだ人は宇宙は一人では何も成し得ぬのだでも私の宇宙を生み出すもう一人のバトラさんは帰ってきませんよならばバトラ以外のものと新しい宇宙を生み出すしかないバトラさん以外の誰かと生み出すというのですかその誰かをわらわが与えよう誰かって何ですかそなたの心を傷を埋め癒してくれる存在だそやつはそなたを裏切らぬそうそなたの新しい兄弟だそなたに弟を与えよう Oh, okay. I was thinking for a second that、uh, she's going to talk about George a little bit. And、uh, she's saying that he will not betray you. And I was like,、eh, not with what you said <laughs> like in episode two. But then again, that's a totally different Beatrice. And some time passes. So when it comes to the thoughts of betrayal and such.、Eh. But no,、yeah, she's talking about、um, with Kanon. So, this is the origin of the canon. Fukuin no ye de Naka no Yokata. Zit no Toto no Yoni Kawai got the Kita Shonen. So you son Zayo Sonata ni Atayo. So yats was Sonata to Futari de Arata na Uchu or Kizukudaro. So no Toto. バトラさんへの恋の痛みを忘れさせてくれるのですかそうだそなたには宇宙が必要だではこの胸の恋の目はどうするのですか私のバトラさんへの気持ちは変わりません枯れさせることなどできませんわらわがその目を根を代わりに引き受けようあなたがあそなたは恋の痛みを忘れ新しい宇宙を作り直すことができる恋の目はわらわが代わって引き受けるわらわは痛みをも引き継ぐことになるがわらわの持たぬ唯一の元素恋を知ることができるビアチュース wanted to know love she wanted to feel what シャノン had felt in the world of humans もしバトラが帰ってくる日が訪れた時まだこの目が枯れずにいてそなたが望んだならこの目をそなたに返そうそれならばどうか<笑> Still hanging her head シャノン gave a small nod but said nothing You mean release from this unbearable pain and it would mean giving the bud of love to the witch to hold in her place シャノン spread the hands that she had held to her chest as she did A faint light slipped out of her chest and floated in the air, gradually swallowing everything with its brightness. As the brilliant light began to fade away, Shannon and Beatrice, still facing each other, were now inside a vast, starry sphere, like a planetarium. They were the only ones in this pitch black starry 
They were the only ones in this pitch black, starry sea. Shannon felt as though she had seen this place once before, but she could not remember. Then, I made another announcement. In this way, Shannon would be tormented by the, by the bird of love anymore. On top of this, so that Shannon can create a new universe, I'll give her a little brother. The backstory for the little brother would be a younger boy at the gospel house with whom Shannon was close. For her name, let there be the on character, as gospel house rules state. Yeah, I've decided. That's a perfect name to go with Shannon's. He'll be a quiet, reticent boy. He'll come to Rokinjima as a new servant. And, well, this is 1983. Like, this is three years before the incident. There, he'll establish an immediate rapport with Sean. As a duty-minded boy who loves Sean like a big sister, he'll always be there for her. Let's have him be a special servant like Genji, who is permitted to serve Kinzo directly. Yeah, that sounds kind of cool. Then, Beatrice. From now on, you will carry the bird of love. In other words, the role of being infatuated with Bellar and waiting for his return will go to you. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Yeah, it does check out. While you are still the witch who reigns over Kenjima's night, you also have been waiting for Oshirumiya Bell ever since that day three years ago. Along with this change in sin, I'll give you a new form as well. He did tell us what his ideal woman would look like once, remember? A woman with a great figure and long, golden hair, like a foreign model. Golden hair, long hair. A great figure. Yeah. Something like that. And that's what the new Beatrice will look like. Come now. Hold that bird of love in your heart as you wait for Bartola. You will learn of love at last and pay the price of pain. Yes, this will be the setting for my new world. For Shannon, a new servant like a little brother will come. He will be a silent, reticent boy. A duty minded kid. Wait, didn't I read this before? A duty-minded kid who loves Shannon as a sister. And the bird of love that has tormented Shannon will go to the witch, Beatrice. She will just be holding on to the bird of love for the time being. However, while she holds on to it, she will be a maiden in love with Belle. For a time, you will be able to learn what love is. Come, let the world be modified. Oh, I am one, yet many! Awaken us! I have awoken. Me too! N not you guys. And stretch your wings in this new world. Slowly, I opened my eyes to the gentle rays of the morning sun. How long has it been since I woke up to such a pleasant morning? And the face in my mirror is tear-stained and pathetic. However, my heart is as clear as the morning sun. I could still clearly remember that strange dream. However, I could feel myself forgetting it rapidly. Okay, well, 
you know, despite what happened uh, and all the suffering that the Shannon went through like the previous years, well, it is as I um, said previously about how Shannon slash Beatrice would uh, eventually forget about Shannon and move on in the form of, you know, George or something else. Which, you know, means good. It is, uh, it is definitely a, a good thing, rather than just uh, torment yourself forever for just one person. It is when Bella returns that um, that can uh, be quite uh, something. But until then, it is time for you to heal some more, Shaman. The place I've been in my dreams, I've been such a strange place. A peaceful, calm place. There, I have left behind the pain that I carried in my chest until yesterday. So this morning, my heart was at peace. My tear-stained face really looked pathetic. However, my expression was bright and cheery. I still do love Neller's song, but I think I'd say... I've calmed down. It feels like I put something precious safely away in the place it belongs. Better song. When will you come back, I wonder? When you do, I'd like to talk about mystery novels again. Oh, I almost forgot. A new boy servant will come will be coming today, won't he? One of the rare servants will serve the master directly. What kind of kid will he be? I hope we get along well. What was his name again? I think it was... clothes were spreading a tarp over a section of the wall. From the way they measured the wall and set out tools, it could be seen that they were preparing to do some sort of construction work. The president of the construction company nodded his head several times to show what he had, that he understood. Hmm... Okay, so yeah, you know we've we've seen a lot of uh, of Shannon's um, history here, and uh, well, we've witnessed uh, the moment with Beller like six years prior to the incident with the promise and everything. But up until this point, we haven't heard a peep of uh, the riddle and uh, and uh, the portrait. Before I was um, theorizing that it has something to do with Shannon as well. Like, who knows, maybe maybe it is uh, Shannon who um, somehow managed to put um, uh, the epitaph and the portrait. And it wasn't necessarily Kinzo who done this. Like, up until this point, we haven't seen like any connection with the epitaph. Like, who knows, maybe... Maybe the epitaph was uh, like uh, some um, some puzzle that uh, that Shannon and Beller would also um, try to complete. It was something that was known like previously, not necessarily right now when the epitaph was put. And you know, there could be a reason, like a hidden reason, why Beatrice would want uh, Beller specifically to solve the epitaph. I mean, you know, there is uh, there is the idea of how, well, Shano knows where the gold is. She would use the gold and to blackmail uh, the family in 1986 to show that she is the new master after Kinzo died. 
she would know where the goal is at this point. But uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe at some point in time, Shano also wanted the Beller to solve the riddle. It's like kind of like another thing, like a thing that they would solve together. It was like part of the promise. But so far, I'm not really seeing like any connection. But I guess we shall see in this, because as far as I'm aware, <laughs> it could be that uh, that uh, these uh, constructors are putting the portrait and uh, putting the epitaph here, not necessarily on uh, Kinzo's behalf, but on Shannon, but they only know that it is uh, ordered by Kinzo. Then, six young workers carried in a large rectangular object wrapped in a white sheet. Apparently, they were putting something large onto the wall of the home. Also, I am pretty curious because, you know, in episode, in, uh, in season seven investigation, I came up with uh, this thought that maybe Shannon uh, created um, uh, the imagery of Beatrice herself and thus uh, uh, retroactively made it so that uh, Beatrice or Cuadorin Beatrice like, you know, Shannon's mother looked like um, like uh, the Beatrice that Shannon created in her mind with her design because she never knew how her mother looked so it wasn't necessarily so it wouldn't be necessarily that uh, Shannon took that image of Beatrice from this portrait that Kinzo made, but rather she invented the look of Beatrice and made the portrait and made all like six or seven games based on that uh, imagery that she created. But uh, who knows? Maybe it's much easier than that. Maybe, maybe uh, Beatrice, like uh, Beatrice, did look like uh, how Kinzo made it, uh, like uh, like how Kinzo knew. And this is the first time that Shannon sees how her mother looked. Thus. She would just basically copy that look for from now on. It could be as easy as that. Like the other idea that I had in mind, that thought that I that I described right now, it certainly would have been an, an interesting uh, little thing. But yeah, I guess we shall see. Natsuki took a deep breath. Though this was a whim of Kinzo's, a man she greatly respected, she seemed to resist the idea of hanging it right there in the entrance hall, the face of the mansion. I wonder why. When the white sheet was pulled off, a western woman wearing a beautiful dress came into view. It was a massive portrait of a woman. Junchodearuka. <laughs> Actually, hold on a second. You know, in season seven investigation, I um, I was debating like some timelines here when it comes to when the portrait was put and when Kinzo died. Like, if you think back on on uh, episode five. And like, the, like, think on the timelines a little bit, like, like at the beginning when we've seen uh, uh, Nazi hide Kinzo's death, and uh, those uh, family conferences when uh, Kinzo was hidden from the other siblings. Like, thinking on the timeline over here, I think he was. I think I remember debating whether Kinzo died before the portrait was uh, put or after the portrait was put, but 
Uh, I am forgetting some details right over here, so I think I'm just gonna think about it a little bit later. I think that uh, I was uh, I was uh, discussing uh, how there was some weird thing that Shannon uh, made here, where she would put a portrait like around exactly when uh, Kinzo died. Therefore, the family would not even would not even know what the fuck the deal is with this portrait. Like, and by the time uh, they would question the portrait, Kinzo already died. So they would come to the conclusion, okay, well, clearly we cannot ask Kinzo. So the only thing we can do is infer that this was ordered by Kinzo. When in actuality, my thought was that this was secretly ordered by Shannon. But, you know, with what is being seen over here, that doesn't seem to be the case. They are like, like, Kinzo and the other siblings, well, Kraus, they are like, right here. And they seem to be fully aware of Kinzo bringing in uh, the portrait over here. They would question Kinzo about this, but they seem to be <laughs> well aware of what is going on over here, so... I don't know, I guess that would mean that I'm gonna have to drop that idea from before. Mm, maybe. I, I'm i not gonna drop it yet, but I guess we shall see by the end of it all. It does seem that I might have to drop that idea. Then again, this again, this uh, this is entirely told from the perspective of Claire slash Yasta, and I did say before that while some stuff are going to be revealed, there are going to be some details that are going to be kept secret. So maybe um, maybe to keep the illusion still intact. Yasta is gonna hide the details of how the Aptav came to fruition and the portrait and and all this stuff. So that's why I said that I'm not gonna drop the idea yet. Uh, Cause I was thinking. Yeah, I I guess we shall see. So that. ベアトリーチェとの出会いがなければ今の私はなく後ろ見分けもなく無論この屋敷もなかったであろう彼女の肖像画を最も良い場所に飾るのは当然のことである Not he had said to his to Not he had said so this plan there will be no contradicting him. Kraus and Nazi could only shrug. Oyakata Sama, Hibun no Pureto des Nayo no Gokakuni Onega Itashimas. Hm, Ichimunik Machina Tetewa Naran Karana. Indeed. Epitaph. Kraus and Nazi crook their heads for Kinson. The leader of the workers sit down a plate wrapped in a sheet. Oh, the Aptaf. Yeah, it has been a while since I, since I thought of you. I like to think that I have solved the Aptaf. It is the location of the gold that really... That really stumps me a little bit. Like, okay. I, uh, I came up with uh, the last keyword, which would be Lord... Ushiromiya. Which, you know, it, um, I feel like I remember is something that has to do with a chapel. Like, I'm sensing that, uh, that it has something to do with a chapel. Hmm. And the others thought that the picture's name and an explanation might be on it. But it seemed to have quite a lot of words for that. Father, 
故郷を貫くあゆの川うん<笑>好きに読み好きに解釈するがよい。いよいよ、ヒブンとショーゾーガの登場か。Cause, okay. I remember that I got the key, Lord of Shiromiya. And we have,、uh, like,、uh, the door to the chapel. And it says, This door will only open at the probability of one in a quadrillion. So, I am thinking that. Uh, that the gold is somewhere. I'm not gonna say that it is inside the chapel, because the gold definitely looked、uh, like it was hidden like somewhere underneath. Again, it is.、Uh, the gold room was definitely、uh, a bunker before, it was、uh, a room from. From the times when the Japanese would come over here and occupy this place, when they made the bunker and such. So, the gold was put in one of the rooms, like underneath. So, it makes me think that something needs to be done with, with the door to the chapel in order to open like、uh, some other door, maybe like a hole that will go down, down, down to the room where the gold is. I kind of know. Maybe, like, I probably thought of this before, and like in my spare time. I think that, like, you could just、uh, rearrange the letters on、uh, that plate, like the golden plate, like,、uh, above the door. Maybe you arrange the words there. That, or there is something to do with the gargoyles. Actually, I didn't think about that. Not the gargoyles, but、uh, the lion. Lion, lion, lion. Oof. Actually, I probably should have thought about that, to be quite honest, about the lion. Is there like any reference to the lion in,、uh, in the epitaph? Hmm. It doesn't exist. Hmm. Actually, you know what? You are bringing up an in interesting、uh, detail over here, Lion. Because, okay, if we are talking about Kinzo and about the differences between your world, Leon, and Yasuda's world, the, the only difference would be.、Uh, nah, nah. Because I was thinking, the difference would be Yasuda. And、uh, because of the sin and such, thus it would connect us to the epitaph. Given the fact that in your world, Leon,、uh, everything's all peachy with Beller, and you don't give a fuck about Beller and such.、Um, that would mean that the epitaph is not necessarily connected to Kinzo, because otherwise you still would have done the epitaph in your world as well. Because there would be like no difference, except there is a difference. Because he would know that you, Leon, are、um, the daughter. Whereas in the,、uh, in the other world, in Yasta's world, Kinzo doesn't know. He thinks that Yasta, he thinks that、uh, the baby from 19 years ago died. So that could be a motivation for why、uh, he would do the epitaph in that world. To resurrect Beatrice. But.、Eh. God damn it, I thought, that I, I thought that I had something there. Dadona, O my no seca inua, O my to you, may hakna atotsi by Yukarna. Shikash, Kono seca inua inai. Yeah. So there was my Kono Hibun or Yahari, Oji Sama, a cocaine or Erabita, and you moke it. Oh, I mean, I, got, I guess that there's that too, but yeah, I don't, I don't give a fuck about the successor and such. Yeah, I, I am thinking of that, like the miracle bringing back、uh, Beatrice, maybe through that. 
or well, not necessarily bring her back. I'd rather put her to sleep. A difficult, okay. a difficult riddle made so that no one would be able to solve it. If someone actually could solve it, then it would be a miraculous person. And then miracle might shepherd the person King's almost desire. つまりこの碑文はやはり誰もが想像するように魔女ベアトリーチェを復活させる儀式を記したものなのですか普通に考えればこれはそう読み取れるでしょう十三人の生贄を捧げれば魔女が蘇るとよみ取れる謎の儀
これは何か And there was a plate with too many words for it to be the title of the picture. Behold the sweet fish river, running through my beloved home of old. 